So we've talked about how to find the derivative of sums of functions, differences of functions, and products of functions. Today we're going to talk about the quotient rule, which is describing what you should do if you're trying to take the derivative of a fraction, one function divided by another. So the goals for today are just to use the quotient rule correctly and be able to get a sense of some of the most common incorrect uses of the quotient rule. For the quotient rule, the setting is as the name suggests. You're trying to find the derivative of the function f of x divided by another function g of x. An example of such a situation would be right down here. You're trying to find the derivative of the function x plus 3 divided by the function x squared plus x plus 1. Now, just like with product rule, this formula is going to be relatively nasty. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's going to be even nastier than the product rule was. So brace yourselves, folks. So here's what you need to do. It starts a little bit like the product rule, but this time you want to put the bottom function first. Function g of x unaltered. Then you want to multiply that by the top function's derivative. Then you subtract. You subtract when you get, when you push the derivative to the opposite function. Generally speaking, the derivative of a fraction is a fraction. So we're going to need to divide this by the quantity g of x squared. <coughs> this is the rule for the derivative of a quotient f of x divided by g of x. Now once again, you know, when, when folks are using this rule every once in a while, uh, you will he hear them recite this little song. Uh, one of the things that I usually hear is low d high minus high d low. The low here stands for the lower function, in this case g. The d stands for the derivative, and high stands for the top function f of x. So low times the derivative of the upper function minus the derivative of the lower function times the upper function. And this would be all over the lower function squared. So let's go ahead and let's try and apply this formula. So in this situation, in terms of organization, some students do like to do some side work before they actually start using the quotient rule. Uh, one of the things that you will commonly see is you will see something like low equals the bottom function x squared plus x plus 1, high equals the top function x plus 3, the derivative of low, you might call it something like low prime or d low or d low dx, whatever appeals to you the most. Uh, this would be the derivative of the bottom function. So this would be 2x plus 1. And then the derivative of the upper function, let's make a note of that. The derivative of the upper function would be 1, since x will become 1 and 3 will vanish. <laughs> okay. So now let's start to construct the derivative using the quotient rule. We have low d high, low d high. So x squared plus x plus 1. d high, the derivative of the top function, <laughs> minus high d low. So the top function was x plus 3. And the d low, the derivative of the bottom function, was 2x plus 1. All 
over the bottom function squared. This would be the derivative of the function given to us, which had an x plus 3 in the numerator and an x squared plus x plus 1 in the denominator. Now in terms of notation, one thing to be on the lookout for is that in the quotient rule itself, f of x is being used to represent the function in the numerator. But in most problems, f of x is also used to represent the entire fraction. So that's why when I'm using this rule, I tend to just write things down in terms of low and high. Uh, the low function being the one in the denominator and the high function being the one in the numerator. That way I don't have to worry about ambiguity between, okay, my f of x means this thing, but their f of x means that thing. Let's try to find the derivative of this function. Here we have the constant function 1 in the numerator and the function 2x plus 5 in the denominator. So in this case, the function, the low function, the function on the bottom, is 2x plus 5. And the derivative of the low function, d low, would be equal to just the slope of this line, 2. In this case, the high function, the one on the top, is given by the constant number 1. And the d high, the derivative of the high function, is given by the derivative of 1, which is 0. So what's the derivative of this entire fraction? Let's go ahead and let's put it together using quotient rule. Low d high. So 2x plus 5 times the derivative of the top function, 0, minus high d low, 1 times 2, all over the low function squared. So 2x plus 5 quantity squared. That's a minus sign. Now we're not under any contractual obligation to simplify this quantity, but I just can't help myself in this case because when I multiply a quantity by zero, then that quantity will vanish. So I'm gonna simplify just because it's really easy in this case. This first term will vanish and it will leave negative two divided by two x plus five quantity squared. So because the quotient rule is this complicated, I find that when students are under stress, are under pressure, and are not exactly sure what to do, uh, this is another one of those rules, like the product rule, that students might use incorrectly. And they might give a result which is hopeful, but not correct. This is the common error that you'll see in these situations. We're given the function f of x equals 2x plus 7 divided by x squared plus 1. This 1, I said. And they'll say, okay, well, the derivative of the function on the top is just 2. And the derivative of the function on the bottom is just 2x. Therefore, the derivative of the entire function, top divided by bottom, uh, must be equal to 2 divided by 2x the quotient of the two derivatives here. But of course we know that quotient rule is not that nice. Quotient rule is a lot messier than that in general. The issue here is that the derivative of a quotient is not so simple as the quotient of the two derivatives. The derivative of this quotient is equal to low, the low function being x squared plus 1. d high, the derivative of the top function, is 2 minus high d low, 
So the top function is 2x plus 7. And the d low, the bottom function, is 2x. Then divide that by the bottom function squared, low squared. Once again, the true nature of f prime is significantly more complicated than this somewhat hopeful answer here. So this is incorrect. Usually when you're using quotient rule, you should expect that at least the, the unsimplified answer should be pretty complicated. Now to date, we have been doing product and quotient rule with functions whose entire formula was given to us. But it's also possible to find the derivative of a product or the derivative of a quotient at a single point uh, using a table of values. So for example here, we're given a table of values for two functions which are called h of x and g of x. In part a, we're given a third function, and we know that the third function, called f in this case, is equal to h times g, the product of h and g. So they say, could you please calculate f prime at zero? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what expression would give me f prime of x, the derivative of this product. <coughs> now product rule says that f prime of x would be equal to the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Now if I wanted specifically the derivative at zero, then I would have to plug x equals zero into this expression on the right side. So let's see if I can use the table to fill in the values of h of zero, g prime of zero, g of zero, and h prime of zero. So looking at the table, the function h, when I plug in x equals zero, outputs the value of one. Next up is g prime. g prime in the table is down here in the fourth row. g prime, when x is zero, outputs the value two. Then I'm going to add g of zero and g of zero is in the second row here. When x is equal to zero, g outputs seven. Finally, we have h prime. h prime is given by the third row in the table. When x is zero, h prime outputs negative 14. Therefore, to finish answering this question, all that I need to do is calculate the value of this number. That would be ni negative 96 if my arithmetic is correct. Similarly, if you wanted to find the derivative of a quotient at a location, specific point x equals 1, then we can do that just using a table, even if we don't necessarily have the formulas for the functions in this problem. By the quotient rule, if I want the derivative of h divided by g, then that would be equal to the low function times the derivative of the high function minus the high function derivative of the low function all over the low function squared. So let me look in the table for data about what the functions h and g are doing at the specific location x equals 1. At x equals 1, g of x is outputting a value of 4. So the g of x in the top left is 4, and the g of x in the denominator will also be 4 at the specific location where x is 1. What's h prime? h prime at x equals 1 is given by the third row, so that would be just 0. What is the h function doing? 
H is outputting 3 at that location, uh, and G prime over here is giving me minus 2. And we get 6 over 16, which, if you want to, can be rewritten as 3 over 8. As always, let's conclude the discussion of the rule with a more conceptual type problem. So suppose that this function f of t measures the speed of an object. So be careful. Unlike the problems that we have done, you know, in the past couple of days, this is not a position function. This function already tells you how fast the object is moving, not where the object is located. You've got to read the question carefully each time to know exactly what quantity f of x represents in that problem. Now someone says, at the time t equals 2 units, is the object with this speed function speeding up or slowing down? Now when someone says speeding up, we understand that to mean that the object's speed is increasing. Now this function f of t, this function f of t is giving me the speed of the object, so speeding up would mean that f of t is increasing. One really easy way to tell is to calculate the derivative and tell if the derivative is positive. Likewise, slowing down means that the speed is decreasing. So the original function f of t is decreasing. And that means that the derivative of f of t is negative. So to answer this question, is the object speeding up or slowing down, all we really need to do is churn out the derivative of this function, throw t equals 2 into that result, and determine if the output is positive or negative. So let's go ahead and let's calculate this derivative using the quotient rule. And for a function that is this simple, I may not write out all the work on the side. For a function this simple, I might write out everything in one line, more similar to how I wrote stuff out using when we did product rule. So we have the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function derivative of the bottom. all over the bottom squared. Now what's the derivative of 1? The derivative of 1 is 0. And therefore this entire first term will vanish. So I'm left with negative 1 times 1 divided by t plus 1 squared. So what is the rate of change of speed at the precise time when t is equal to 2? We can get that by plugging t equals 2 into this result, and we get negative 1 over 2 plus 1 squared, so that would be 9. This is a negative number, so we would conclude that the object is slowing down. Now some of you looking at this calculation may be thinking the following. Wouldn't it also be possible to answer this question just by graphing the function f of t and checking on the graph whether the function was tilted up or tilted down at the location where t is equal to 2? And you are absolutely right. If we went out to Desmos and graphed the function 1 over, I just said, x plus 1, uh, for positive x's, 
then we would see that the graph of the function is tilted downward and that this function is decreasing. But one of the advantages of being able to do the calculation by hand instead of only answering via the graph is that now not only do we know that the object is slowing down, but we know exactly how quickly the object is slowing down. This idea of taking the derivative of speed is a physics idea that gives you a quantity that's called acceleration. The acceleration of an object is the precise exact rate of change of its velocity. And it's something that's used to determine how much an object is speeding up or slowing down. The acceleration is used in formulas such as some of Newton's law, that the force of an object can be measured by its mass times its acceleration. Acceleration shows up in formulas like this one. So that concludes today's material. We discussed quotient rule, we looked at some examples of using quotient rule, and we saw an instance of an incorrect use of quotient rule. Then we practiced finding the value of a derivative using a table, and then we practiced applying quotient rule in the context of finding the derivative of the speed of an object. The derivative of the speed of an object is called its acceleration.